Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin market cycles. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com, where you can, of course, get access to the charts that you will see in the video, as well as many more. Let's go ahead and jump in. So I wanted to talk a little bit here about Bitcoin market cycles, because one of the things that we have discussed at length this year is the idea that Bitcoin would essentially cool off for a while back in March. And one of the reasons we said that it would cool off was because USDT dominance was hitting its trend line, its long-term trend line. So if you go look at that, USDT dominance hitting the long-term trend line. Every time it hits it, you get a larger correction. Furthermore, we said, look, oftentimes you'll get a mid-cycle correction, okay? And if you look at gold, right, if you look at gold, one of the things you'll notice is that last cycle, that's what marked that mid-cycle top for Bitcoin, where then Bitcoin basically bled for about six to nine months, right? Six months without the pandemic, nine months with the pandemic. And so when that happened in March, again, of this year, it was just simply, guys, what if the same thing happens again, right? Doesn't have to. But this was the idea. What if the same thing happens again? And the reason we were looking at this was because if you go look at the last Bitcoin market cycle, right? So if you go over here and, and we go to, say, ROI from the low, from the bottom, if you look at this and you just look at the last couple of cycles, first, just look at cycle four. So this was last cycle and compare it to cycle three. Do you notice how at some point, we saw Bitcoin get ahead of the la of the cycle before that. And then as the rate cuts arrived, Bitcoin got in line with the prior cycle. You see that? It got back in line with the prior cycle. Now, we did have a pandemic-induced recession, and we went a lot lower. Obviously, re recessions can change what the general trend is. Okay? And that's always an important thing to remember. But that's what happened, right? Early move, people called for a left translated peak. Didn't happen. Rate cuts arrived. We got back in line with the prior cycle. And then we continued on. We had a hard landing. The Fed cut rates. The Fed printed money. And we went on our merry way. Now, if you look at this cycle compared to the last one, there's also a period where we got quote unquote ahead of schedule. And one of the things we said back over here was what happens if we just get a six to nine month period where the market just slowly goes down to get back in line with the prior cycle. And if you compare it to both prior cycles, measured peak to peak, Bitcoin went down to where basically those two cycles were at that point in the cycle just a few days ago. And that was what was interesting. We said that many, many times is that Bitcoin could drop below 50K and still be in line with the last two cycles. So when you look at it like that, it, it, it made a lot of sense that that would be the most likely outcome. And here we are. Now, we do still have some issues to get through. We have a rising unemployment rate. We do have an inverted yield curve. We have all that, right? We also had all that last cycle as well. Um, and you know, you saw what happened. We had a hard landing and we just went back up after that. So it's an interesting way to view the market, right? To view it through the lens of these cycles, because what happens is right, you get your QT rally, quantitative tightening rally where Bitcoin dominance goes up and then it go, Bitcoin gets a little too carried away and then has to come back down, get in line with prior cycles. And then we see if it's a soft landing or a hard landing. You could have argued that last cycle was a soft landing. And then the pandemic hit, right? But it's also one of those things, right, where you had an inverted yield curve and then there was a reason. Maybe this time it'll be a soft landing or it could be a hard landing and there will be a reason for it, right? But it does go to show that by just simply having a more, you know, a calmer view on the market back in March, especially when the indicators were flashing, that things were, were heated, it, it makes sense that this was always the most likely outcome. OK, so we can also look at this as measured from the peak. Now, if you measure it from the peak, we are still ahead of schedule, if you want to call it that. I mean, 
you know, even with these current, even with the drawdowns that Bitcoin has had, at this point in the last two cycles, Bitcoin was still about 45% down from the all-time high, right? And 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 the, the prior cycles all-time high, not you know, not that cycle. I mean, the the, the prior cycles all-time high. So the prior cycles all-time high, you know, if you were to go 45% down, that puts Bitcoin at like 38k. Just to give you an idea of how far extended we are right now based on the last two cycles. Now, note that this is not something we haven't seen before. The same thing occurred last cycle as well, where Bitcoin kind of got ahead of itself and then eventually it got back in line with the prior cycle. So now if you look at this cycle compared to the last one, you can see that you know something similar has been happening, right? It's gotten ahead and now it's slowly getting back in line with the prior cycle. And, and that is something that I think it's an important thing to, to remember in these cycles that oftentimes Bitcoin can lead the rally early in the, in, the, in the bull market, especially QT bull market. But until you get that transition to looser policy, Bitcoin dominance is likely going to go up. And so one of the things I mentioned is that I thought we had entered the window where Bitcoin will go sideways with a slightly bearish bias until Bitcoin dominance hits about 60%. Now, what's interesting is I've, I've seen some people say, well, it hasn't been bearish bias, right? It hasn't. But, you know, all I'm referring to, guys, and again, I mean, this is just something that's already happened. It's just the a, a series of lower highs and lower lows. Like, that's what I mean. You know, sideways with a slightly bearish bias is just, you know, you're seeing lower highs and lower lows. It doesn't mean it's always going to be like that, but that's what it's been so far. And as it's ha as that's happened, right? As as that's happened, the Bitcoin dominance has, of course, been going up basically for that entire time. So, those views on the market have been correct. The views of watching this get back in line have been correct, right? It's you know, the market really hasn't gone anywhere for basically since like February March timeframe, like about half a year or so. The market hasn't really made much progress. Okay, now. I would also like to, I mean, I'd be remiss if I didn't show it ROI after the halving. I know a lot of people like to look at it like that. Let's just look at the last couple. This is actually the worst performance so far by Bitcoin uh, after the halving at this point, at the, after the halving. Um, so again, you know, there are some some sort of risks that are, are sort of showing up right now that didn't show up in the last cycle. You have the carry trade. You have, you know, um, a much more slower, steady climb in the unemployment rate. So that could explain it. Um, one thing that that's interesting, if you look at like the, the, the prior having cycles, you know, after having cycle one, it, Bitcoin basically just went up and never went below that, that value again. Right. After having cycle three, same thing, right. It went up, never went below that price again, but, it, but having cycle two and four did go below their starting price at the having. So it's almost like it flip flops what it's going to do, right? One and three. It's basically up only after the having, for at least a little while. Two and four, you know, there's some there's some issues to get through. And by the way, in 2016, there was also fears of a of a recession and and a hard landing. Right? We ended up getting a saw. I mean, there were there were I think some parts of the world there were, there were recessions, but the United States was able to avoid it. Um, but you know, again, all these things show you just how how similar this cycle is to prior cycles, especially when you measure it from the low, right? When you measure it from the low, it, it just kind of looks like the same thing, right? It kind of looks like the same thing. Um, when you measure it from the high, peak to peak, okay, still looks like maybe there's a little bit more churn to go, right, before you really get to the point where you can justify going, you know, going too much higher. OK, um, but I, I just wanted to show the uh, the market cycle ROI. One of the things I mentioned earlier this year was that if you get a if you get a summer lull and then an immediate rally after the summer, then you could actually, you know, it's possible to get a left translated peak. But my my argument, two arguments, right, two arguments around that. One argument is that a left translated peak is not the base case, right? I mean, it's not because all prior peaks have occurred in Q4, the post-having year. And every cycle, people talk about, you know, a, a left translated peak. So I, I would say it's not, it, it was never the base case, but in order to increase the odds of, of a rally off in 2025, it was important for Bitcoin to go through this period that it's been going through. And it, it might not be over, right? I mean, there, there certainly could still be more in store for us. 
uh, for Bitcoin. It hasn't yet proven that it's not just putting in another lower high at this point. So we'll have to wait and see. And also it is, by the way, you know, back up to its 20 week SMA or the, the 21 week EMA that it's got to get through as well. So, you know, and, and it's gone above it on, on some of the wicks, but you know, this is where Bitcoin is right now, right? And and it hasn't actually changed the trend just yet. And Bitcoin dominance, I don't think has yet peaked. And I don't think all Bitcoin pairs have yet broken down to where they need to go. So there's still some work to do. And, you know, looking at it as measured from the peak, it shows you we got time to work through that. You know, we got we got time to work through that part of the cycle if we need to. Um, it, it's there. But, you know, looking at, at it, you know, looking at, at Bitcoin USD and, 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 and seeing, you know, what it's done this year so far, it, it really does, it really was reminiscent to 2019, right? The series of lower lows and lower highs um, and, and everyone's screaming for a left translated peak. The other thing about a left translated peak that we should keep on our radar is that there, there does always exist a scenario where you do have a left translated peak where the peak is already in. Right. So if, if you made me choose what's the most likely scenarios, the first the most likely scenario would probably just be normal time, you know, sometime in the post having year. Right. After QE comes back, they print a lot of money. Bitcoin goes back up. Second most likely thing I would say is a left translated peak where the peak's already in. I would say the least likely would be a peak where the peak occurs, you know, like in a, in, in a month or something, though it could. I mean, it could be or not, maybe not a month, but like, um by the end of the year, right? I know a lot of people are talking about something like that. It is still possible. And if you get a Q4 rally, then that's got to come back on your radar, right? But again, there are some elements of like, well, you know, if, if you do believe in a left translated peak, if that is your base case, then just remind yourself that left translated peak could also occur. It could have already occurred, right? If, if that's kind of the camp you're in. Again, just keep it in mind. It's not like, you know, there's plenty of reasons to suggest that that's not the case. Um, like if you look at, at at some of the other metrics, it doesn't seem like the market's gotten nearly as extended as it got back over here in 2021. Um, and in fact, if you were to look at like the social risk, it's still pretty low. It doesn't really look like what you would see at a major top. But I guess the risk is if the Fed induces a recession, you know, what if these people just don't come back, right, for this cycle? Because, you know, they're too busy worried about their job. That's always a risk, right? That's certainly always a risk. And, and you know, we, we've pointed some of this stuff out before, you know, like taking the sort of the FIB retracement from back over there in 2017 and kind of saying, you know, that 73K level could be a difficult level uh, for Bitcoin to get through, right? And you can see that right now it's actually gone right back up to the, um, to the 3.618, right? That's where it, it just tagged. So that, that, that still is kind of a dilemma for, for Bitcoin. And, you know, if you were to look at, at like the S&P, you know, one of the things that you'll notice throughout the cycles is that that 1.618 can provide resistance for a while. And that's just what the S&P got rejected off of. In fact, it was actually the 1.618 that got tagged just before the pandemic occurred. And if you go the cycle before that, it was the 1.618 as measured from the, you know, the sort of the midterm year low. It was the the 1.618 right there that acted as resistance for a while. And it, it took a while to really get through it, right? It took a lot of attempts to really get through it. And you can also find other examples in history, right? They like go back to the 1970s. Um, if you look at like the 1970s, there were examples where, you know, you put in sort of a high and then you put in a low in the election year or the, the midterm year. And then that 1.618 does, in fact, act, act as some resistance. So that's probably the bigger risk for Bitcoin is if the S&P can't really durably break through the 1.618. I'm not saying it can't. I mean, even with the pandemic, we, we still eventually broke through it. Um, and even the year before, you know, the cycle before that, right? We had a, you know, we had a recession scare, but we ended up getting back into gear and we took out that 1.618 durably by Q4 of the election year, right? By November, we were durably above it. So, that, I think that's probably the one thing I would say, right? If you are in the left translated peak camp, I, I see a lot of people calling for it and they keep saying, you know, like Q4 this year, right? Q4 this year. Um, but if you're in that camp, that's also a risk of, you know, has the Fed done too much damage? I don't, I don't think it should necessarily be the base case, but it is a risk that, you know, is at least worthwhile to put on your radar. In the meantime, in the meantime, if you just look at, at, at Bitcoin's ROI, 
uh, from the low, I mean, it kind of looks like it always looks at this point in the cycle, right? I mean, look, if we do get a hard landing like last cycle, then we could go well below, you know, the normal ROI at that point in the cycle, right? That's got to be something on your radar. But so far for the last several years, I think that being just Bitcoin heavy crypto portfolio has, has done incredibly well. Um, and it's basically helped you preserve your Satoshi valuation as opposed to, you know, theoretically losing a lot of it in the altcoin market. Although some altcoins have done well, uh, most of them have really not. So those are my general views on the market. I, I think that, you know, for, as measured from the low, there's still plenty of time for, you know, for some churn to go on and for, for the rest of the market to get in line, for the altcoin market to really bow down to the king and to get Bitcoin dominance up to 60%. Uh, if you measure it from the peak, you know, there's still a lot of time before before you really get to where the other two cycles were. Now, if you measure the 2021 peak from April, you could argue that we are a lot further along, you know, April of 2021. Right. And you compare it to the 2016. You could argue that we are we are, in fact, a lot further along in that and and that it could play out like, you know, sort of like that 2016 cycle. However, as I've said before, I mean, I, I do think it makes a little bit more sense to, you know, to compare things to when price actually topped and not just from when the indicators say it topped, right? Like when it actually topped. And when you do that, you get a chart that looks like this. So if you do get a left translated peak where the peak occurs, say, in Q4 of this year, then Bitcoin would need to durably take out you know, 70K relatively soon, you know, kind of like it did in the 20, 2015 to 2017 cycle, right? It, 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 you know, around this time, it finally started to pick up steam and then it, it ultimately made it, made it through finally. Um, but the market structure back then was a lot different than what we've seen today, right? Back then we were putting in higher lows and higher highs, right? Since March, we've been putting in lower lows and lower highs. So it is, you know, it is some slightly different market structure and, you know, if you were to compare that to last cycle, right, if you were to compare it to last cycle, it looked like we were following that right, at one at one point, and then we sort of just fell away from it, right? So then you just kind of go back to saying, all right, well, what if you just measure it from November, then it looks a little bit more, more, you know, believable. If you measure from April, it's like, all right, well, we've already kind of gone past that window as to when it, it topped. And so you could see the same thing happen for for this comparison as well. Where, you know, comparing it to the April, it looks like it's valid. But if Bitcoin can't really durably take out those highs, then it could end up just kind of looking like what the prior comparison looked like. Where it looked like it was kind of following it and then it just sort of trailed off, right? So I, I would I would keep that in mind um, as well as we as we continue to push forward through time in this, you know, in this market cycle. Whatever whatever it ends up, shape up shaping up to be, right? And I don't know. You know, I don't know. I, I do think that... And I've said this before, I think that Bitcoin heavy has been a, a good strategy, sort of an acknowledgement of like, I don't know what's going to happen. And if, if Bitcoin goes up, having Bitcoin gives you exposure to the upside. If it drops, it's going to minimize your downside risk, because if it does drop, altcoins will likely drop more. I've been saying that all year. It's been true all year. And, and here we are at 61K, um, basically the same price we've been at since March off and on. Um, but the main difference is that Bitcoin dominance is a lot higher today than it was back in March, right? There's just been this rotation of capital from alts to Bitcoin. So I think, you know, my personal opinion is that you could still very well have a normal cycle. You could even have a recession and still have a normal cycle, right? Not all recessions have to be, you know, 50% drops in the stock market. Um, you could have something like that. And still get a normal cycle where you get a peak in Q4 of the post having year. You could have a cycle where you get a left translated peak by the end of the year, or you could have a cycle where the peak is already in. All three scenarios should be on your radar in terms of how do you manage that risk. And if your first thought is to say, is to scoff at any of those situations, at any of those scenarios, and say, well, that can't possibly be right, it's a market, guys. Anything can happen at all times. And I, I think if anything at this point, everyone should know that, right? So if you think it's impossible to have a left translated peak, it's possible. Even though I, I don't think it's the most likely scenario, it's possible. I think the, the people that were the most fanatic about a left translated peak a little bit later this year 
I, I think they would have thought we'd be above 70k by now, right? And 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 probably by at 100k by 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 this point is what I was reading earlier this year. So that hasn't happened, right? So I don't really know if people still believe that or not, but it is something, right? I mean, maybe there's like a 10 to 20 percent chance that that happens. Um, maybe there's like a 10 to 20 percent chance that it's already in, and then maybe the rest is that it's just a normal cycle, like every other cycle, and and everyone's just trying to overcomplicate it once again. But We'll go ahead and wrap it up. Those are my views on the Bitcoin market cycle. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe, give the video a thumbs up. And again, check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.